it up for Eddie. Oh, man. <laughs> Uh, we were in a series, yeah, titled Church I See, and we're talking about the mission, the vision, and the values here at Journey Church. And our mission is this, is to see our cities transformed by the power of the gospel for the glory of God in our generation. And we know that here at Journey, we cannot do that apart from the presence of God, apart from the Holy Spirit, can we? And so we have a vision in order to complete this mission which is uh, to build a community of people that is life around the presence of God. Every moment of our lives, we want to do it with him, with the Holy Spirit, to be led by him. We talked about in the second week of this series that uh, how to have a personal encounter with God. We believe that as we as a body have a personal encounter with God every single day. What does that mean? That we're spending time in worship every single day. We're spending time in prayer. We're spending time in God's word. And then we're asking the Lord, Lord, speak for your servant is listening. And as we pray that prayer and allow him to speak to us, then we can give that God encounter away, which we're talking about today, to this world in order to fulfill our mission. Last week we talked about uh, the value of celebration. Celebration, if you're, not, if you're not having fun, we said you're doing it wrong, amen? Like we can have fun in church. And part of that is celebrating wins when God moves and God does something in someone's life. We've seen miracles happen in our body, in this church. Last week, matter of fact, we had someone uh, testify and tell us that, uh, that the Lord healed their hips. Like they were having hip pain and the Lord healed their hips during service. Yeah, come on. Give God some praise. And they actually, they actually went to the chiropractor, and it was confirmed that everything was in alignment. I mean, come on, Jesus. Someone else had a rotator cuff that was knocked out of place and was experiencing pain. And God healed that as well. They walked out of this place pain-free. They couldn't move their arm. And they ended up able to move their arm, and it was pain-free. Amen. Praise God for that. Come on. And there's countless stories of that. But there's even stories about how the Lord just moved and worked in people's lives. And they gave just their entire life to Jesus and how the Lord has just changed them. And so, man, we want to partner with these stories. So we talked about celebration last week. Uh, next week, we are actually concluding our series. And Pastor Eric is going to be talking about the value of being genuine. And this week, though, uh, we are talking about the value of evangelism. Now, if you were to ask me, you know, what is the most important value, I would put this right up there near the top. Because it's really what Jesus asked us to do. And this is how we say and articulate this value, evangelism. We say it like this. We want to take God encounters and give them away. We value the urgent responsibility and privilege given to us by God to proclaim the gospel to all people, tribes, and nations. We evangelize, evangelize by sharing the knowledge and understanding of God that we receive in our daily encounters with him. Could you do me a favor? Let's all read this statement together. We value the urgent responsibility and privilege given to us by God to proclaim the gospel to all people, tribes, and nations. We evangelize by sharing the knowledge and understanding of God that we receive in our daily encounters with him. So as we have daily encounters with him, as we pray as we worship him, as we're in the word, then we take that encounter and we give it away. If you like the notes that are in front of me this morning, you can text the number on the screen. Let's pray and let's just ask the Holy Spirit just to speak to us this morning. Holy Spirit, we are here for you. Lord, we did not come here to sing a few songs. We did not here to come some, a message that makes us feel good. Lord, what we want is you, Holy Spirit, to speak to our heart, to convict our hearts, God, so that we can be more like you. Lord, I pray even today, Jesus, that, God, you would give us such a burden for the lost and the hurting. 
God, give us such a burden, Jesus, for those who are so far from you, who do not know you and they don't even know it, Father God. That, Lord, you would baptize us with an anointing, God, because it's the Spirit of the Lord, I heard this in worship, the Spirit of the Lord is upon you this morning, is upon this congregation to preach the good news, to tell the world about who you are. So, God, would you give us such a burden, God, for this world? That God, we can't help, we wouldn't be able to help but to tell the world about the one that we love, Jesus. So speak, God, for your servant is listening. We love you in Jesus' name. Everyone said amen. 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 Let's define uh, evangelism this morning. Evangelism is this, just very simply, it's sharing the gospel. Evangelism is sharing the gospel. So let's break it down even more. What is the gospel? The gospel is the good news that Jesus died to save us from the penalty of sin. John 3.16, many of you learned this maybe in Sunday school. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. That word perish there in the Greek is this word apolemy, which means to utterly destroy or permanently to cancel. You see, we live in a cancel culture here in America right now. And what Jesus did is he came to cancel sin so that sin would not cancel us. The gospel is that there is nothing that we could ever do to earn the free gift of salvation. It is only by grace and grace alone in putting faith in him. There is nothing that we could ever do. Matter of fact, the Bible says that Jesus came and he canceled sin for us. It is only by grace and grace alone. It is only by faith. And while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's good news, is it not? Tap someone right now and say, that's good news. Come on, tap another person and say, that's good news. This is good news, church, that while we were sinners, Christ died for you. Christ died for me. Evangelism is simply just sharing the gospel, the good news. And every time someone gives their life to Jesus, the kingdom of God advances. So what I want to do this morning is I want to give you three reasons to share your faith. I'll give you three reasons this morning to share your faith. The first reason to share your faith is this. Number one, because people are going to hell. People are going to hell. What is hell? Hell is the state where those that do not have faith in Jesus are condemned to suffer eternally. We get the word hell from the Greek word Gehenna. Gehenna means Sheol or hell or uh, the place of the dead. We see this word appear in Scripture 162 times in the New Testament. Of those 162 times, Jesus actually talks about hell 70 times or refers to it. He actually refers to hell more than he refers to heaven. There's two subjects that Jesus talks about a ton throughout Scripture. One of them is really two of them that we don't want to hear at all. One of them is hell. The other one is finances. Let's read right here where Jesus talks about about hell. He, He says this in Matthew 13, 40. It says, Jesus said this, just as the weeds are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom and all the causes of sin and lawbreakers and throw them into the fiery furnace in the place where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Hell is a very real place. And it's important that I tell you this morning, and it's important that I let you know this, that good people, good people don't go to heaven. Save people go to heaven. Good people do not go to heaven. Saved people go to heaven. In fact, good people will go to hell. 
Listen, church, the Bible says this, narrow is the road that leads to life. And wide is the road that leads to death. I said this um, back last year in one of my messages that your belief in God determines where you will spend eternity. But your behavior determines how you will spend eternity. So do our works matter? Yes, they matter what happens when we get to heaven and how we spend our time there. But our belief determines where we are going. It's important for us to believe, but it's also important for us to do good works while we're here. But are we saved by works? No, it is only by grace and grace alone. Let me ask you a question this morning, though. Do you care that your family member that doesn't know Jesus is going to hell? Do you care that that coworker that you see every single day that doesn't know Jesus is going to hell? Do you care that that friend that you get together with on a regular basis that's never given their life to the Lord is going to hell? Let me help you out, and I believe this is true. I believe you would answer the question. You would say, yes, I do care. But what happens in our lives is we let the busyness of our lives, we let all these other distractions in our lives keep us back from what really matters. And we're not living on mission. We're not living with the gospel-centered heart. We're not realizing what is really happening and what is what really is at stake because all the other things that we are going after and we are chasing after. And here's the challenging part. We can't make people have faith though, can we? We can't make people have faith. There are some people who are just hard-hearted. There are some people who are obstinate. There are some people who don't want to receive from you. There are some people who don't want to listen to anything you have to say. Those people are called family members, right? <laughs> they don't want to listen to you. And you can't make them have faith. So what do you do in those situations? <laughs> the answer is this. I don't really know. But I do know who does know. It's the Holy Spirit. What do you do when they're rejecting it? You pray and you ask the Holy Spirit. So the first thing you do, I mean, the Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. That person in your family who is far from God, you pray for them daily. Pray for them every single day. The second thing you do is you ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, how are you going to work in the situation? How are you going to move? Like, let me be led by your spirit so I can share the gospel with them. Break down the walls. Break down that hard heart. You know, my grandfather, uh, he passed away about a decade ago now. Uh, but before he passed away, let me first go back. I regress. Let me, let me go back to this. My grandfather, he had major church hurt in his life. And... Uh, the reason why is because uh, the church hurt his family and there's a lot of stuff that went on. So his entire life, he just rejected Christ altogether. Didn't want anything to do with the church. Didn't want anything to do with God. Just rejected it. Well, my grandmother got saved and she was saved for 30-something years. She was on fire for Jesus. And I know that every single day, my grandmother, before she passed away, she prayed for my grandfather every single day. Now, before my grandfather passed away, just about three weeks before he passed away, he began to hear this hammer sound in his head, just a hammer constantly, just constantly, a hammer in his head. And my grandfather asked my dad, my dad tells this story, he asked my dad, he says, Mike, I'm hearing this hammer sound, and I don't know what it is. He was on morphine at the time, and my dad told him, uh, dad, it's probably just, just morphine. It's probably just the morphine in your body. And my dad says this. He grabbed him by the shirt like this and looked him straight in the eye. He said, son, it's real. I know it's real. It's not the medicine. It's real. So my dad began to pray, and he asked the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, what are you doing in this situation? What are you saying to my dad? And the Holy Spirit gave my dad this scripture. Would you put it on the screen out of Jeremiah? He said, 
Is not my word like fire that consumes all that cannot endure the test, says the Lord? And like a hammer that breaks the most stubborn rock in pieces. You see, my grandfather had a heart of stone. He rejected the Lord. Didn't want anything to do with him. And my dad went excitingly the next day to my grandfather. He said, Dad, I had this scripture that the Lord gave me. And he said, the Lord is hammering away your rock, the heart of stone that you have. That's what he's doing right now. The reason why you're hearing a hammer in your head is because God is breaking the hardened heart that you have. And he looked my dad in the eyes. He said, son, that's it. And right then and there, my dad was able to lead my grandfather to Jesus. Come on. I remember sitting at the funeral, and I was thinking to myself, man, this could have been a terrible day. This could have been a terrible day. But you know what? My grandfather, it's a beautiful day. It's a day of celebration because he's in heaven with my grandmother. He's in heaven with my mom. And then we can celebrate that. God worked. He moved. Why? Because my grandmother prayed her entire life for him every single day. Why? Because my dad was led by the Holy Spirit. What a beautiful thing. How good is our God to do that? He is so good. Despite man's flaws, despite church hurt, despite people rejecting God because of hurts and unforgiveness, the Lord was able to break his heart for him. Romans 10, 14 says this. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Preacher, there's someone who will tell them about Christ. Church, people are going to hell unless we tell them. May we have a burden to tell this world that is lost and destined for eternity in hell. But because of the grace of God, we can see them go to heaven. Number two this morning, second reason to share your faith is because people are hurting. People are hurting. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Now, I want to share the message version with you. So don't tune this out. This is really good. I love the way it reads, all right? It says this. Are you tired? Worn out? This world is tired. This world is worn out. Some of you in this room right now are tired. You're worn out. Are you burned out on religion? Yes, I'm burned out. I don't want religion. What do I want? I want relationship with Jesus. I don't care about all the other stuff. I don't care what we've made it. I want relationship with God. Anyone else in here desire that more than anything else? Yeah. We want relationship with God. He says this, come to me. If you're tired, if you're worn out, come to him. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real test, real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. That's the invitation of the Lord. The Lord make to his disciples, come follow me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Listen, there are so many people who are hurting. There are so many people who are looking for answers. There are so many people who are self-helping and self-medicating. They're looking for the next exciting thing to fill the void in their life. They're next looking for the next rush to fill that void that only Jesus can fill. They're going to money and trying to seek after things. And they climb the ladder of success only to find at the end of the ladder is leaving them feeling empty. They get the boat. They get the house. They get everything else they ever desired. They have the 401ks and everything else in the bank account, all the savings account and they've saved up and they've gone to the end of the ladder of success uh, in, in this world that people see only to be left feeling empty. 
Church, we have what this world needs. They are lost and they are hurting and we have the answers. And some of us in this room, we're chasing after those things and we're still left feeling so empty. It is only in relationship with God that we're going to fulfill this void. It is only in him. I'm guilty too, church. I confess I'm guilty. Sometimes I get so distracted off the things that don't matter, and I go after everything else other than him. But may we just fix our eyes on Christ. May we just fix our eyes on him and just have a heart after him, just to abide in him, just to have a relationship in him. You see, people are hurting, and we have the answer to heal the void and heal their pain. It's amazing how we let the spirit of fear hold us back from sharing our faith sometimes. You know, we hear a quickening of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will speak to us and say, hey, go share that your faith with that, with that waitress or that barista or, or whoever might be, that friend. And the next thing we hear in our head almost immediately is, no, nah, you don't need to go do that. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's okay. They're gonna, the, it's all right. Just continue on your way. Listen, the first voice that you heard, that was the Holy Spirit. The second one, that was your flesh. That was not the Holy Spirit. That was you just wanting to stay in your comfort zone. Oftentimes, it's even the enemy just whispering in your ear right then and there. So what we'll do is we'll allow our comfortability to hold us back from sharing our faith. Because when it's about us, what will we say? Oh, just give me the venti, like give me the large coffee, like give me whatever makes me feel good in that moment. So listen, we, we get so distracted with what really matters and we're saying, Lord, what are you, what are you, what are you doing? How are you leading me? And, and what we'll do is we'll, we'll not share our faith because of our comfortability. When what's really at stake is someone's eternity. They're destined for hell and we're more worried about our comfortability and how we feel. So, I mean, what's the question there? There is this, there's this thing in our hearts sometimes that we don't want to even be pushy towards people, right? We don't want to push our beliefs on them. We don't want to push what we believe. We'll just kind of stay over here. I don't want to make them have to believe something that, man, we have the truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through him. In this world, man, they are getting pushy with their agendas, are they not? This world is getting so pushy. And last time I checked, there are still only two genders, y'all. It's not a, yeah. It's not okay to smack someone just for the sake of doing it because they offended your, your wife. Last time I checked in scripture, Jesus said to turn your other cheek. And it's, everything is getting so, so pushy. Look at stuff with Disney and everything else. They're pushing their agenda on our kids. It is time for us as a church to push back a little bit and stop being in our comfort zone so much. It is time for us to take a stand with what we know is true. Because he is the truth. He is the way. He is the light. We can defeat the darkness of this world with the light that is hovering inside of us. And he is with us. For he has anointed us to preach the good news to the gospel of this world. To see the captive set free. That is the God we serve. That is who he is. If we hide behind wisdom forever. If we hide behind fear. What are we settling with this world? What is going to happen? Number one, people are going to hell. Number two, people are hurting. Number three, people are hungry. People are hungry. People are hungry for what is real. They're hungry for something that is real. They're trying to find something that will fulfill them, and it only comes through Jesus. Proverbs 27.20 
hell and destruction are never full. So the eyes of man are never satisfied. John 6.35, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger. Whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Church, you have the answer. You have the answer. I'm going to give you now three practical ways how to share your faith. Really simple. Number one, invite people into your corporate encounters. Simply just invite people into your corporate encounters. Invite people here to the church. We said that we want to make our corporate encounters lead people to daily personal encounters with God. That when we come here, we are encountering the power of the Holy Spirit. And that will change people. So we simply invite people to come to church with us. Invite them to come sit with you. Ask your friends. Ask your neighbors. Make it a point of conversation. Bring people to this encounter with God. You can't help but to walk in this place and not sense the power of God. When worship strikes up, man, there's something that changes in the atmosphere. And matter of fact, I believe that people are already walking through these doors and they don't even know it. But as soon as they get out of the car in the parking lot, they're sensing the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit right then and right there. And that can change them. They're like, man, there's something different about that place. I've got to have that God. And it can change them. So number two, practical way. Invite them to your corporate encounters, number one. Uh, actually, I want to mention this. We have invite cards uh, that you can grab. They're back there at Next Steps. I believe they're on your seats. There's a sign out there, too. You can grab invite cards. And you can use that as a tool to give to, uh, to people. Number two, take your daily encounters public. What does this mean? You share your faith. You may ask, I don't know where to share my faith. You share it everywhere you go. You share it in, in, in uh, coffee shops. You share it in your workplace. You share it in restaurants. You share it everywhere you go. You know, maybe this week I just challenge you to do this. After church today, I challenge you to do this even. If you go out to eat. If you go out to eat, just, man, don't be weird about it. But say to your, your waiter or waitress that, hey, we're about to pray. Um, is there anything that we can pray with you about? Just really that simple. Be normal about it. Hey, we're about to pray. Is there any need that you have? I'd love to pray, pray for you while we pray for our food. Just that simple. Open a door. Who knows what God does through that, right? They may look at you really weird. Don't be scared about that. But nine times out of ten, they're like, wow, you want to pray for me? People don't really reject prayer. You know what I'm saying? They don't reject it. And then leave them a little invite card. Number three, you tell the world. Tell the world. Very simply. You could tell the world through social media. You could just take a, take a video of the worship here, or take a video of, of another uh, encounter with the Lord that, uh, that you're a part of and just post it online. And what that does is it raises people's hunger for God. You could post a scripture that the Lord is dealing with you on. But here, here's the important thing, though. Do it from a heart of evangelism, not a heart for people to see you spiritual. You know what I'm saying? Because if you do it from a heart of just wanting people to approve of you, wanting people to look at you as spiritual, you're robbing what God wants to do in that work. Yeah? So number one, invite people to your corporate encounter. Number two, take your daily encounters public. Number three, tell the world. Tell the world. So I challenge you, everyone in this room, become an evangelist. What is an evangelist? An evangelist is a spokesperson for the church proclaiming the gospel to the world. Evangelist is mentioned uh, three times in the New Testament. Uh, two times in the book of Acts, one time in, the, in, in Ephesians. But evangelism is mentioned many times. So I want to read this to you. This is probably the most famous uh, uh, evangelistic uh, scripture in all the Bible. We call this a great commission, Matthew 28. It says this. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So go back for a moment. Look at verse 18. Then Jesus came to them. Say them. Come on, say them. So Jesus came to them. When he says them, he's talking about everyone present there. 
This is the commissioning of the gospel to go around the entire world. So here, check this out. We have Matthew chapter 28, the great commission. Go into all the world, preaching the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then right after that, we have Acts chapter 1. We call this the ascension. And Jesus says, you will be my witnesses to Jerusalem, Judea, Sumeria, and to the ends of the earth. Then he tells them this, the disciples this, go and wait for the Holy Spirit. Do you see what he's doing there? He commissions them, tells them to go be the witness, but you need the power of the Holy Spirit to do that. You see, if you find it difficult to share your faith, it's because you're not doing it by being led by the Holy Spirit. It is only through the leading of the Holy Spirit. You see, it's easy to share the gospel when you're being led by the Holy Spirit. Now watch this. Acts chapter 3. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. Ninth hour is 3 p.m. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful to ask alms from those who enter the temple. Verse three, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked for alms and fixing his eyes on him with John and Peter said, look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. This man, he was asking for money. Church, this world is asking for things to fulfill them, like money. And Peter and John here say, silver and gold, I don't have, but what I do have. You see, they were walking with Jesus for three years. They saw Jesus heal the blind man. They saw Jesus set the captive free. They saw Jesus bring liberty to those who were bound, who had strongholds in their life. They saw miracles, signs, and wonders that Jesus did. And they said, I have the same spirit that conquered the grave, lives within me, so freely I have received. Now freely I give silver and gold I don't have. But what I do have, I give to you. What does that man do? He gets up and he dances because then his legs, his, his, he is set free and he is healed by the power of Jesus. See, Jesus is calling us to give away what we have received. Watch this now, Matthew 10, 8. He says this to disciples and he says, he's saying this to us too. And as you go, preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, now freely give. Evangelism takes place when you simply take your relationship with God and you give it away. You simply take what the Lord is doing in your life and you give it away. You see, we thought, we thought church, it was about apologetics. We thought it was about answering all the difficult questions that might arise. We thought it was about knowing theology so we can explain all the differences in everything. We thought it was about answering every question that might come up. When Jesus is simply saying, freely you have received, now freely give. Listen, church, when you are attached to the vine, when you abide in him, what will happen? You're going to bear fruit. You're going to bear fruit. That's why our vision is what it is. That we would build a community of people that's life around the presence of God. 
Because we know that if you are abiding in the Lord, if you really know Him, if it's not about religion, it's not about just going through the motions, then man, you're going to bear fruit. And what we are called to do is to change this region, church. What we are called to do is to tell people about the God that we love. If it just comes from a place of just, I have to do this out of religion, out of just because I'm supposed to do it because I call myself a Christian and I live in the Bible Belt. Listen, the Bible Belt is done. It is, everything has shifted. Everything has changed. If we do it just because of religion and not out of, because I've abided in the Lord and I know him, man, there's nothing to give away. Give away what you have received. Peter and John, they gave away what they received. Freely you have received, now freely give. And if you come in a situation where you feel like in a moment where it didn't work out the way you thought it would work out, Jesus encourages his disciples with this. In Matthew 10, just right after he says this, freely you receive, now freely give. Verse 14, he says, And whoever will not receive you, nor hear your words, when you depart from that house or city, shake off the dust from your feet. In other words, keep going. Your job is to give it away, and the results are up to the Holy Spirit. Your job is to give it away. The results are up to him. But here's the thing, church. You can't give away what you don't have. You can't give away what you don't have. We want to take God encounters and we want to give them away. For freely you have received, now freely give. Would you stand to your feet right now? Come on. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Just bow your head and close your eyes for a moment. You can't give away what you don't have. In this room, there might be some people who have never given their life to Jesus. And you feel a tug of the Holy Spirit right now. And he's tugging on your heart. And he's asking you to give your life to him. If that is you in this place, would you just lift your hands? Anyone in this room never received Jesus in their heart? Anyone in this room right now, would you lift your hands to heaven? You say, man, I want to give my life to Jesus. I surrender everything I have to him. Anyone at all? Yeah. Anyone at all? So I take it in this room right now. Everyone is going to spend eternity in heaven. So what you're called to do in this place is to tell the world about the one that you love. If you want to ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, just give me a burden to tell this world about you. If that is you in this room right now, just lift your hands to heaven. Come on, just ask him. Lord, I'll need a burden to share the gospel with someone. I need a burden. Come on, there should be everyone in this room. If you've given your heart to Jesus, this is what it's all about, is to share the gospel, to share about the one you love. So Lord, I pray as we are lifting our hands to you, God, Lord, we are saying to you right now, God, help us, Lord, to have a burden for you, God, to have a burden for this world, God, to be called, Lord, you've called us to set the captive free, God. You've called us to evangelize, God. You've called us to share the gospel, the good news of the kingdom of God with the lost and the hurting world. So God, I pray for an anointing upon this house, an anointing upon this body of believers, Jesus, to tell the world about you, Jesus. And so Lord, we give you everything we have and everything we are, and we ask you, Lord, to move and to work in this place, God. Lord, we want to see this region, God, change. God, we want to see our cities change by the power of the gospel for the glory of God in our generation, God. Lord,
Lord, we will not settle for anything less than that, God. So, Lord, may you teach us to abide in you so that we might have fruit, God. We will teach us to abide in you, Jesus. Lord, break our hearts for what breaks yours. Come on, just say that out loud. Lord, break my heart for what breaks yours. Come on, church. Break my heart for what breaks yours. Come on, everyone. Break my heart, oh God, for what breaks yours. Lord, we ask for your heart. Lord, we ask for your heart. God, we just want to repent right now, Jesus, of making it so often about us. Lord, I repent for making it so often about me, about my comfortability, God. Instead of having eyes to see this world that is hurting, so many people that think they know you, but they don't really know you, Jesus. Lord, help us to live genuine lives after you. It's not about religion, oh God, but it's about relationship with you. So Lord, help us to walk the narrow road. Lord, I just want to play, pray in this place right now for every single family member that's far from you. Every single person that's in our families, Jesus, that doesn't know you, that has a hard heart, that is resisting you. I pray, God, that just as you, what you did for my grandfather, the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. So I testify and I declare and I prophesy through that, God, that, God, you are going to break hearts of stone. Lord, take the hammer and break away, chip away stubborn hearts, God, that this world would not satisfy, Lord Jesus, but, Lord, you would draw those people, those family members to you, God, those friends to you, Father God, those people far from you to yourself, God. And, Lord, you would use your Holy Spirit to speak to us, to see those people saved and give their heart to you. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Can you just give God some praise? Come on.